Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena, and in today's video, we're going to be sewing up a really quick tulle overskirt that you can jazz up any wiggle dress in your collection or even a full skirted dress. This does not require a pattern today. This is something I wanted to do really quickly that is very beginner friendly, and I wanted to use one of my favorite attachments on my sewing machine. So for a little bit of context, this is Mother's Day weekend and I'm actually uploading this video the same day that I actually made the outfit. I had another dress planned for today, but I unfortunately couldn't get it done in time because this week did not go as planned at all. I had a lot of stuff come up that I had to tend to, so I didn't get a whole lot of sewing done this week on the dress that I was already making. So I decided that I would just wear a dress that I already had and just give it a little bit of jazzing. So I'm gonna show you how you can quickly do that. So if you're watching this video shortly after it's uploaded, if you too need to make something really quickly, you can just run out to the store really quickly and make this outfit in under an hour, unless you do extra embellishments like me, and then it'll take you a couple more hours. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me in real time on Instagram at Serena underscore. If you'd like to support this channel further, you can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi and you can also become a bobbin today where you can get exclusive content over on Patreon. Everything will be linked below. Let's go. I have three yards of tool in my stash and so I'm going to leave it on the fold like it was on the bolt and I'm going to cut the raw edges down to 27 inches long so that's how long I want my skirt to be and then the reason it's going to stay all three yards is so that way when I add the gather to it it is nice and fluffy and I get a lot of dimension. I'm going to gather the folded edges so that way I have two layers. I'm going to use my ruffler foot and this is how it attaches to the machine. That bottom part goes where the screw is and then the top C looking area goes on top of the needle bar arm or I'm not sure what it's called. But it attaches really quickly, it's really easy to do and I feel like once you see it done, anyone can do it to their own machine. And so once it's on, I just tighten up the screw so that way it stays on and then I go in with a test sheet of tool so that way I can gather it up and make sure that the gather is exactly the amount of gathering I want, the fullness I want, because you can either gather with this or you can do pleats and so I do it at the tightest stitch where it, it gathers every single stitch. The reason I am gathering the folded edge of this is so that way it appears to be two layers of tulle on the bottom. So instead of cutting two long rectangles and gathering them separately, I just found that leaving it on the fold and gathering the folded edges will do the same thing without doing double the work. And we are on a time crunch. Another thing with this attachment is you can gather and sew on fabric at the exact same time. So you don't have to do this in two steps like I am doing, but I hadn't cut my waistband out yet, so we are going to do this in two steps. So that's together. Now it's time to cut out the waistband and I cut it out to the length of my waist with a little bit of extra length for the seam allowance. And I do it three inches wide because I want a one inch um, waistband. And so with a half inch seam allowance, I end up with a one inch waistband and make sure to interface it so that way it's nice and sturdy and doesn't stretch out with wear. When I tell you this is a very quick project, I am not lying. I did this this morning and technically if I would not have added the extra on the very end to really embellish it and make it go really well with the dress that I'm wearing, I would have been able to get it done in an hour and so oh and then if I wasn't filming it probably would have been less than an hour so now I'm adding the seam allowance I'm pressing the seam allowance into the waistband I could not find my white thread for the life of me so I do have to do a little bit of hand stitching or more hand stitching than I anticipated but that is okay if you have matching thread you can do a top stitch if you really are in a hurry now let's talk closure. Since it's technically like a belt, you can always put like a super sparkly or pretty belt buckle, a vintage one inch belt buckle would be super adorable, but I don't have that and we are working with things exclusively in my stash right now. So I decided to use um, some findings that I already had in my stash for like a bow tie. And so I did the clasp of the bow tie on there and then I made a tiny little bow for the um, closure. 
so the center front looks seamless. Now I am sewing up the ends of my waistband using a half inch seam allowance. Now for marking the points where you attach the tool, I put a mark for where the side seams are on my dress and that's where I want my tool to end on the side seams instead of going all the way around. I've marked it about an inch past the side seams going towards the center of the dress. And so once you put the marking there, you're gonna want to sew the tool onto the seam allowance of the waistband. You can have your overskirt go all the way around, but I think on a wiggle dress, it looks really nice to define the hip area if you stop it at the side seams. It definitely gives old Hollywood glam if you do it that way. Now it's time to attach this tool. So with right sides together, I am sewing the tool onto the seam allowance and because it's already pressed in, it doesn't really matter where you sew the tool or attach the tool on as long as you don't go past the part where you press the fold into. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And I wanted to mention how cheap this project is. If you don't already have tool in your stash, sometimes you can get it on sale for about 99 cents or $1.99 a yard. So for me, this project cost me $6 if I were just counting the tool alone, plus the scrap fabric that I had left over from the dress. So now I am sewing up the waistband and I'm sewing it right sides together, stopping where the tool starts and the rest of the center piece will be hand sewn in. So I turn that right side out and then I do the other side the exact same way. So once both sides of the waistband are turned right side out, then you're going to cover the tool and hand sew the um, tool into the waistband or you could top stitch it if you have matching thread and you're in a hurry. So now it's time to add the embellishment. If you're not adding embellishment, technically you were done once you put your closures on, but I am a little bit extra. So I have these leftover mini daffodils and I am pulling the stems. I'm trying to get the flowers off the stems and I'm going to take the center plastic piece out of the center of the flowers as well because we're gonna use French knots to adhere these to the tool. As I was doing this, I thought to myself that I probably should have glued this if I truly was in a hurry. And I mean, technically I was mostly in a hurry to get this video out because I still have one whole day before actual Mother's Day. So um, yeah, I started pulling everything out and you could technically glue this. You can sew a pearl into the center. You can do all different kinds of things with this. But for right now, I'm just gonna use some embroidery floss and put a French knot through the center because that's exactly how I made the bodice of my dress. For the first couple of flowers, I pinned them in place to figure out what I wanted the spacing to be like. So I only really pinned the first three or four flowers and then after that, I randomly assort them in a way that matches the rest. Also, I am only sewing these to the first layer of tulle and not the others. And I want to mention that I decided to go with two layers of tulle, but if you have more tulle, by all means, layer them up and make it more fluffy than this. I thought two was more than enough, but I think three or four would be super dramatic. Now it's time to attach them. So in order to do that, I use some embroidery floss on like a tapestry or embroidery needle. I'm using all of the strands of the floss so that way I can get a nice thick knot up the center. And so basically what I do is layer the two pieces together and then I go in from behind and make a singular stitch that anchors the flower down in two places first. Once that anchor stitch is in, then I'm gonna go through the center make a French knot by wrapping the thread around the needle a couple times, maybe three or four times, and then I go right back down through the center and pull until I have a nice knot. I hope that's helpful, <laughs> but it's a, it's a really simple technique um, and it's called a French knot, so you can definitely look that up. Um, and it was, I wish I could have done a better job of showing you this, but it was a little difficult to hold the tool and do this technique. I found it to be a lot easier when I was doing this on the bodice because um, cotton is more stable than tool. So the tool was moving around quite a bit. At first I started adding these flowers on the dress form and then I moved to my cutting table and then back to the dress form. So yeah, it, it definitely shifted a lot and just did not go on as simply as just working with a smaller piece of cotton. So it did take a little bit more time to put on these couple flowers than it took for me to embellish the entire bodice of my dress just because the pieces were a bit smaller on the dress. 
but it was worth every bit of time and I'm even considering going back and adding some more in there to really fill it out but I like the way that it looks like the daffodils are kind of floating through the air it's very enchanting so I, I definitely adore this technique and so I just keep going one by one and adding these daffodils on and um, you could also just glue the daffodil on and put like a rhinestone through the center like there are so many different possibilities with this I was also thinking you can probably machine stitch through the centers and then add the French knot in after the fact so that way the flowers are already stable on the um, tool and you don't have to hold it so much um, and you won't have to depend on pins either especially after you take them out and they don't stay so now this is the dress this is the Liz dress that I made last August and this is it with the skirt attached I think it's super cute I'm very happy with how it turned out so many people thought that this would make a very pretty wedding dress with an overskirt on it so I could imagine that if you did a full length super fluffy tulle skirt over the top it would make a lovely wedding dress or a reception dress um, for me I just think it's a really cute hostess dress it reminds me a lot of the fashion figures from pattern art that has this cute light airy organza or tulle overskirt let me know if this is something that you would try if you do try it go ahead and tag me on instagram i'd love to see your work don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video you can follow me on instagram at serena underscore to see what i'm up to in real time special thanks to my supporters and bobbins over on patreon and ko-fi if you would like to join us for exclusive content check out the link in the description below. Have a wonderful day. Bye!